Welcome to Empires Explained, a channel dedicated to uncovering the mysteries behind the rise and fall of the greatest empires in human history. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell for fascinating videos every Wednesday. The year is 311 BC. In the wake of Alexander the Great's conquests, the Seleucid Empire stands as a sprawling colossus, a testament to the power woven by the Diadochi, the successors of the Great Conqueror. As the echoes of Alexander's footsteps fade, the Babylonian War begins. Antigonus I, a formidable force ruling over Anatolia and Syria, emerges as a central figure, while the indomitable Seleucus I, once a trusted general, seeks to carve his destiny into the pantheon of empires. The stage is set for a clash of titans, a battle that reverberates through the ancient landscapes of Mesopotamia. Seleucus, with the scars of his past and the ambitions of an empire burning within, faces off against the mighty Antigonus. The fate of the Seleucid Empire hangs in the balance and the ancient city of Babylon becomes the crucible of destiny. Let us delve into the intricacies of Seleucus's strategies, the alliances forged in the crucible of conflict, and the relentless pursuit of power that propels the Seleucid Empire towards its zenith. From the banks of the Tigris to the towering walls of Babylon, let us explore the rise and fall of the Seleucid Empire. The Emergence of the Seleucid Empire in the aftermath of Alexander the Great's conquest of the Persian Empire, a pivotal period of transition unfolded. Alexander, who met an untimely demise, left behind a Hellenized realm, bereft of a mature heir to the throne. The governance of this empire fell to the hands of a regent named Perdiccas. Consequently, the territories were partitioned among Alexander's generals during the partition of Babylon later that same year, transforming them into satraps. This era witnessed a fierce power struggle among Alexander's generals, each vied for supremacy over different segments of the empire. Ptolemy I Sota, a former general and the existing satrap of Egypt, was the first to challenge the established order. His rebellion marked a turning point leading to the downfall of Padikas and the subsequent reorganization of the empire through the partition of Triparadisus in 320 BC. Amidst these political upheavals, Seleucus, distinguished as the commander-in-chief of the Companion Cavalry and earlier appointed as the court Chiliarch, ascended to prominence. This position made him the senior officer in the royal army, following the regent and commander-in-chief Padikas since 323 BC, despite his eventual involvement in Perdiccas's assassination. Seleucus strategically expanded his dominions, ruthlessly seizing control of Babylonia in 312 BC. This pivotal moment is recognized as the foundation date of the Seleucid Empire, signifying the commencement of Seleucus's remarkable ascent to power and the establishment of a new and formidable realm. The Babylonian Wars, Triumph and Expansion The Babylonian Wars was a clash spanning 311-309 BC between two formidable figures, Antigonus I Monophthalmus and Seleucus I Nicator. The outcome of this intense struggle not only sealed the fate of Alexander the Great's former empire, but also heralded the rise of the Seleucid Empire. The Battle of Ipsus emerged as the crucible where the dreams of restoring Alexander's empire were shattered. Following the demise of Alexander in 323 BC, the empire plunged into disarray with the First War of the Diadochi witnessing the defeat of those attempting to salvage it. Antigonus, a prominent figure who had carved out his own realm in Anatolia and Syria, gained momentum during the Second War of the Diadochi causing unease among fellow generals. In the ensuing Third War of the Diadochi, Antigonus skillfully kept Ptolemy of Egypt and Cassander of Macedon in check. The year 311 BC brought a momentary respite with the peace of the dynasts, though it excluded Seleucus. Having been expelled by Antigonus in 316 BC, Seleucus, armed with an army provided by Ptolemy, 
returned to his satrapy of Babylonia. His strategic brilliance became evident as he swiftly gained recognition as the new ruler of Babylon, with only a fortress remaining under Antigonus's control. Antigonus's satraps in Media and Arya attempted to intervene, but Seleucus, with a well-prepared army, ambushed and defeated them near the Tigris in November 311 BC. The Iranian soldiers, swayed by Seleucus's victory, aligned themselves with the ruler of Babylonia, allowing Seleucus to traverse the Zagros Mountains, capture Ecbatana, the capital of Media, and march on to Susa, southern Iraq, and a significant portion of Iran now lay under Seleucus's control. The news of Nicanor and Euagoras' defeat reached Antigonus around the time of the Peace of the Dynasts. In response, he dispatched his son Demetrius Poliotetes to restore order in Babylon. Despite Demetrius' entry into Babylon, he faced staunch resistance from Seleucus's supporters and ultimately retreated to Syria without achieving his objectives. Antigonus made another attempt in the autumn of 310 BC, but was compelled to leave Babylon in March 309 BC after facing a defeat at the hands of Seleucus. Acknowledging the inevitable, Antigonus conceded Babylonia, Media, and Elam to Seleucus. The seleucid morian War, a tale of conquest and diplomacy, 305 to 303 BC marked the seleucid morian Wars, where Seleucus sought to reclaim the Indian satrapies of the Macedonian Empire from Emperor Chandragupta Maurya of the burgeoning Mauryan Empire. The war culminated in a settlement, resulting in the annexation of the Indus Valley region and a portion of Afghanistan to the Mauryan Empire. Chandragupta secured control over the territories and forged a matrimonial alliance between the Seleucid and Mauryan powers. Chandragupta Maurya's ascent to power around 321 BC marked the commencement of a remarkable journey. Determined to subjugate the Nanda dynasty ruling the Gangetic Plain, he waged a relentless 11-year campaign, employing successful guerrilla tactics to capture the Nanda capital of Pataliputra. The conflict between Seleucus and Chandragupta was inevitable, fueled by the Mauryan annexation of territories governed by Nicanor, Philip, Eudemus, and Python. Chandragupta's victories instilled a realization in Seleucus that safeguarding his eastern flank was imperative. Crossing the Indus, Seleucus faced formidable challenges, with the details of the conflict shrouded in historical ambiguity. The aftermath witnessed Seleucus ceding the Hindu Kush, Punjab, and parts of Afghanistan to Chandragupta Maurya. This pivotal arrangement included the exchange of 500 war elephants from Chandragupta to Seleucus, influencing the wars of the Diadochi in the West. A marriage alliance, possibly involving Seleucus's daughter, further solidified the diplomatic bonds between the two empires. The surrender of easternmost provinces and the acceptance by other satraps underscored the profound impact of this accord. The gift of war elephants facilitated Seleucus in defeating his rival Antigonus at the Battle of Ipsus, leading to the foundation of the enduring Seleucid Empire, a dominant force in the Mediterranean and the Middle East until 64 BC. The westward expansion of the Seleucid Empire in the later stages of his rule, Seleucus embarked on a strategic westward expansion that shaped the territorial expanse of his realm. This period witnessed the establishment of a new capital at Antioch on the Orontes, a city named in honor of his father. Additionally, an alternative capital emerged at Seleucia on the Tigris, positioned north of Babylon, showcasing Seleucus's astute geopolitical foresight. The zenith of Seleucus's territorial dominion was achieved after a decisive victory over his erstwhile ally, Lysimachus, at Corupedion in 281 BC. Following this triumph, Seleucus extended his sway to encompass the western regions of Anatolia. Eager to further consolidate his influence, Seleucus harbored aspirations to assert control over Lysimachus's European territories, specifically Thrace and Macedonia. However, his ambitious plans were cut short 
when he fell victim to assassination at the hands of Ptolemy Tyrannus upon his landing in Europe. The mantle of leadership passed to Seleucus's son and successor, Antiochus I Soter, who inherited an expansive realm encompassing nearly all of the Asian portions of the empire. Despite this formidable inheritance, Antiochus faced formidable challenges. The Macedonian throne was occupied by Antigonus II Gonatus, while Ptolemy II Philadelphus wielded significant influence in Egypt. These geopolitical realities posed significant hurdles for Antiochus, preventing him from continuing his father's ambitious project of conquering the European territories within Alexander's erstwhile empire. The legacy of Seleucus's westward expansion persisted, and while the immediate European conquest eluded Antiochus, the strategic foundations laid by his father continued to influence the geopolitical landscape. The disintegration of Central Asian territories within the Seleucid Empire. The reigns of Antiochus I from 281 to 261 BC and his successor, Antiochus II Theos, from 261 to 246 BC, ushered in a tumultuous era marked by challenges in the western regions of the Seleucid Empire. The constant conflicts with Ptolemy II and a formidable Celtic invasion of Asia Minor diverted attention, contributing to the unraveling of the eastern portions of the empire. As Antiochus II grappled with these challenges, various provinces in Central Asia began asserting their independence, marking a significant turning point in the geopolitical landscape. During Antiochus's rule, Bactria and Sogdiana, under the leadership of Diodotus, Cappadocia led by Ariarathes III and Parthia under Andragoras simultaneously declared their autonomy. Around 245 BC, Diodotus, the governor of Bactria, declared independence and founded the Greco-Bactrian kingdom. This realm, characterized by a rich Hellenistic culture, endured until approximately 125 BC when it succumbed to the invasion of northern nomads. Notably, Demetrius I of Bactria, one of the Greco-Bactrian kings, ventured into India around 180 BC, establishing the Indo-Greek kingdoms. In Persis, the Fratarakas rulers exhibited signs of independence from the Seleucids during the 3rd century BC, particularly during the time of Vahpas. Gradually, they adopted the title of Kings of Persis, eventually becoming vassals to the emerging Parthian Empire. The Seleucid satrap of Parthia, Andragoras, also sought independence, mirroring the actions of his Bactrian counterpart. However, a pivotal moment occurred when a Parthian tribal chief named Arsaces invaded the territory around 238 BC, laying the foundation for the Arsacid dynasty and the subsequent Parthian Empire. Seleucus II Callinicus ascended to the throne around 246 BC, only to face dramatic defeats in the Third Syrian War against Ptolemy III of Egypt and engage in a civil war against his own brother Antiochus Hyrax. Seizing the opportunity presented by this internal strife, Bactria and Parthia seceded from the Seleucid Empire. Simultaneously, the dynasty's control over Asia Minor appeared to wane, with the Gauls firmly establishing themselves in Galatia, semi-independent and semi-Hellenized kingdoms flourishing in Bithynia, Pontus and Cappadocia, and the city of Pergamum in the west asserting its independence under the Attalid dynasty. The Seleucid Empire's economic foundations exhibited early signs of weakness as Galatians gained independence, and Pergamum assumed control of coastal cities in Anatolia. Consequently, these developments contributed to a partial hindrance in contact with the Western realms, marking a crucial juncture in the Seleucid Empire's history. The Seleucid Revival, 223 to 191 BC. Antiochus III rose to the throne in 223 BC, marking the commencement of a notable revival. Although facing initial setbacks in the Fourth Syrian War against Egypt, including a notable defeat 
at the Battle of Raphia in 217 BC, Antiochus emerged as a formidable ruler. Antiochus embarked on a decade-long Anabasis, a journey through the eastern reaches of his domain. During this period, he focused on restoring control over rebellious vassals, notably Parthia and Greco-Bactria, ensuring at least nominal obedience. His military prowess shone through in victorious encounters such as the Battle of Mount Labus and the Battle of the Arius. The Bactrian capital faced a prolonged siege, a testament to Antiochus's determination to reclaim authority. In a nod to Seleucus's legacy, Antiochus undertook an expedition into India, mirroring the earlier endeavors in the Seleucid-Morian War. During this venture, he met with King Sophagasinus and received war elephants, possibly in adherence to existing treaties and alliances forged after the Seleucid-Morian conflict. Upon returning to the Western Territories in 205 BC, Antiochus found a propitious opportunity for further expansion. With the death of Ptolemy IV, he and Philip V of Macedon entered into a pact to divide the Ptolemaic possessions outside of Egypt. In the Fifth Syrian War, the Seleucids successfully ousted Ptolemy from control of Coli Syria, and the Battle of Panium in 200 BC definitively transferred these holdings from the Ptolemies to the Seleucids. Antiochus's achievements during this period appeared to restore the Seleucid kingdom to its former glory. The Seleucid revival under his reign not only demonstrated military prowess, but also showcased strategic brilliance in diplomatic maneuvers, expansion into Greece, and conflict with Rome. The historical narrative took a dramatic turn as Antiochus, spurred by the defeat of his former ally Philip by Rome in 197 BC, seized an opportunity for expansion into Greece. With the influential counsel of the exiled Carthaginian general Hannibal and a strategic alliance with the discontented Aetolian League, Antiochus set forth on an ambitious invasion across the Hellespont. Armed with a formidable army, he aspired to elevate the Seleucid Empire as the preeminent power in the Hellenic world. However, these grand designs set the stage for a clash with the power of the Mediterranean, the Roman Republic. The battles of Thermopylae in 191 BC and Magnesia in 190 BC marked decisive turning points where Antiochus's forces suffered resounding defeats. Faced with overwhelming setbacks, he was compelled to seek peace, culminating in the signing of the Treaty of Apamea in 188 BC. The primary stipulation of this treaty mandated the payment of a substantial indemnity by the Seleucids. Furthermore, Antiochus agreed to withdraw from Anatolia and pledged never again to endeavor expansion west of the Taurus Mountains. As a consequence of the treaty, the Kingdom of Pergamum and the Republic of Rhodes, staunch allies of Rome in the conflict, gained control over the former Seleucid territories in Anatolia. This pivotal moment not only underscored Rome's growing influence in the Mediterranean, but also marked a significant setback for the Seleucid Empire's aspirations in the Western domains. Tragically, Antiochus met his demise in 187 BC during another expedition to the east. His objective was to extract funds to fulfill the indemnity imposed by the Treaty of Apamea. The events surrounding the expansion into Greece and the ensuing conflict with Rome exemplify a critical juncture in Seleucid history, portraying the challenges and consequences of ambitions that collided with the ascendancy of the Roman Republic. Roman power, Parthia and Judea in the Seleucid Empire. The reign of Seleucus IV Philopator from 187 to 175 BC, the son and successor of Antiochus, was consumed by efforts to meet the substantial indemnity imposed by the Treaty of Apamea. However, Seleucus faced a tragic end when he was assassinated by his minister Heliodorus. Upon Seleucus's demise, his younger brother, Antiochus IV Epiphanes, ascended to the throne. Eager to restore Seleucid power and prestige, 
Antiochus engaged in a successful war against the perennial adversary, Ptolemaic Egypt. Initially triumphant, the Seleucids defeated the Egyptian army, compelling them to retreat to Alexandria. However, Antiochus's plans were abruptly interrupted when Roman commissioners, led by proconsul Gaius Papilius Lanus, arrived seeking a meeting with the Seleucid king. During their encounter, Antiochus extended a hand in friendship, only to have Papilius place in his hand the tablets containing a decree from the Roman Senate. The decree unequivocally demanded the cessation of the attack on Alexandria and the immediate halt of hostilities against Ptolemy. Faced with this stern ultimatum, Antiochus, after a brief hesitation, chose to withdraw rather than provoke another war with Rome. Following his encounter with Roman authority, Antiochus, on his return journey, launched an expedition to Judea. There, he seized Jerusalem by force, causing significant bloodshed among those who supported Ptolemy. The temple suffered desecration, and the daily sacrifice of expiation was interrupted for three years and six months, according to Josephus. In the latter part of Antiochus's reign, the Seleucid Empire faced further disintegration. Economically weakened, militarily strained, and experiencing a loss of prestige, the empire became susceptible to internal rebellions and external threats. Rebels in the eastern regions further undermined the empire, while the Parthians seized the opportunity to expand into the old Persian lands. Antiochus's forceful Hellenizing policies, aimed at suppressing Judaic traditions, triggered a full-scale armed rebellion in Judea, the Maccabean Revolt. The empire struggled to concurrently address the Parthian threat, quell the Jewish rebellion, and maintain control over its provinces. Antiochus initiated a military campaign that included capturing Artaxius I, the king of Armenia, and reclaiming Armenia. Despite reaching as far as Persepolis, he was eventually forced out of the city by its populace. Antiochus's eventful reign concluded with his death in Isfahan in 164 BC, marking the end of an era characterized by conflict, rebellion, and the gradual decline of the Seleucid Empire. Civil war and further decay in the Seleucid Empire. Following the death of Antiochus, the Seleucid Empire plunged into increasing instability marked by frequent civil wars, rendering central authority precarious at best. The young heir, Antiochus V Eupator, was initially overthrown by Seleucus's son, Demetrius I Soter, in 161 BC. Attempting to restore Seleucid influence, Demetrius faced his own ousting in 150 BC by Alexander Ballas, an imposter backed by Egypt, claiming to be the son of Epiphanes. Alexander Ballas ruled until 145 BC when he was dethroned by Demetrius' son, Demetrius II Nicator. However, Demetrius struggled to assert control over the entire kingdom, contending with remnants of Ballas' supporters in Antioch, initially backing Ballas' son Antiochus VI and later supporting the usurper Diodotus Tryphon. By 143 BC, the Jews, led by the Maccabees, had successfully established their independence. Parthian expansion persisted, culminating in the defeat of Demetrius II in 139 BC, leading to his capture. By this point, the entire Iranian plateau had fallen under Parthian control. Antiochus VII Sidetes, the brother of Demetrius Nicator, assumed the throne after his brother's capture. Facing the daunting challenge of restoring a rapidly disintegrating empire besieged on multiple fronts, Sidetes confronted threats from the Jewish Maccabee rebels in Kohli, Syria, and encroachments by once vassal dynasties in Armenia, Cappadocia, and Pontus. Additionally, the nomadic Parthians, under the leadership of Mithridates, the first of Parthia, had conquered upland media. The ever-present spectre of Roman intervention further compounded the challenges. Sidetes managed to quell the Maccabees and temporarily subdue the Anatolian dynasts. In 133 BC, he launched a campaign to the east with the full might of the royal army. 
supported by Jewish forces under the Hasmonean prince, John Hyrcanus. The initial success saw the recapture of Mesopotamia, Babylonia, and Media. However, during the winter of 130 BC, as his army was scattered in winter quarters throughout Media and Persis, the Parthian king Phraates II launched a counterattack. In the ensuing Battle of Ecbatana in 129 BC, Antiochus Sidetes was ambushed and killed, earning him the moniker of the last great Seleucid king. With the demise of Antiochus VII Sidetes, the Parthians recaptured all of the reclaimed eastern territories. The Maccabees rebelled once more, civil war fractured the empire, and the Armenians began encroaching on Syria from the north. Collapse of the Seleucid Empire By 100 BC, the once mighty Seleucid Empire had dwindled to a mere semblance of its former self, with control extending scarcely beyond Antioch and a handful of Syrian cities. Despite the evident collapse of their power and the kingdom's gradual decline, the nobility persisted in manipulating succession, occasionally influenced by external powers like Ptolemaic Egypt. The Seleucids clung to existence primarily because neighboring nations saw them as a useful buffer between themselves and potential adversaries. During the Anatolian conflicts between Mithridates VI of Pontus and Rome's Sulla, the Seleucids, although diminished, remained largely untouched by the major belligerents. However, the ambitious Tigranes the Great, the King of Armenia, and Mithridates' son-in-law discerned an opportunity for expansion amid the persistent civil strife to the south. In 83 BC, invited by one of the factions entangled in the ceaseless internal conflicts, Tigranes invaded Syria and swiftly asserted control, essentially bringing the Seleucid Empire to a virtual end. Although Seleucid rule faced a brief revival after the Roman general Lucullus defeated both Mithridates and Tigranes in 69 BC, the spectre of civil wars loomed large. A truncated Seleucid kingdom was restored under Antiochus XIII. Yet, internal conflicts persisted as another Seleucid, Philip II, vied for supremacy with Antiochus. With the Roman conquest of Pontus, concerns grew in Rome about the perpetual instability in Syria under the Seleucids. Upon Pompey's decisive victory over Mithridates in 63 BC, he embarked on a mission to reshape the Hellenistic East. Creating new client kingdoms and establishing provinces, Pompey opted for a different approach with Syria. Viewing the Seleucids as a persistent source of trouble, Pompey extinguished the remnants of Seleucid authority. Disposing of rival Seleucid princes, he transformed Syria into a Roman province, marking the definitive end of the Seleucid Empire.